Hi guys, this is Dinro. Welcome to KSP Science Exploration Adventure Episode 17. I was going to point out that I don't want to spend a lot of time zipping through waiting to get to these far out missions unless you do stuff at home here in the Gale system, but 42 days and 62 days isn't actually that long, so I might actually reach that while I'm doing stuff here in system. But things that I wanted to start working on are things I haven't ever really done before, such as building a colony. I haven't ever used uh, the colony system until this playthrough. And mining. I haven't done mining before, but before I get into that, I've got 1,451 science that I can spend. So for fuel, mining, advanced fuel systems, let's get started with that. There's the converter that I can use to convert the ore, as well as some low quality drills. Let's see, these get more expensive, 1,500 and 1,000. Um, the drills heat up and need to be cooled down. So I should put some points into thermodynamics so that I can get some radiators. Let's see, 1100. Hmm. I want to find engines because the nuclear engines are a lot more efficient. At the cost of usually lower thrust weight. I think it's probably... This looks like a dead end. There aren't any arrows coming off of it. So I'll get the improved nuclear power. And then nuclear propulsion. Here we go. So you can see something like this is uh, 240 kilonewtons of thrust and the ISP is 800 instead of around the 340 or so that we have with the other engines. But it's also extremely heavy for what it is, it's 12 tons for 240 thrust, which is ridiculous. But I'll research that, 106 science, I don't really have much to spend that on. So here's a vessel that I built to do some mining. You can see it's rather unaerodynamic, but we'll be able to get it up to IOTA. All right, I'm just going to aim up for a second. And then send these nose cones off into space. Except for they, they should fall back down. Well, if my vessel is going to be to 4 o'clock... That's actually coming up then. I can probably burn here. Like I did earlier. What is this vessel that's gonna... Some kind of debris. So that means I don't even need to, uh shift my orbit, which I don't want to because I do want to be kind of polar. I have these engines set up so that I can turn off different clusters if I want to be more efficient, like if I'm just slowing down. But for this burn, since I need to do it in a timely manner, I'm just going to use all of my engines.
So you'll notice that I don't have any solar panels. These little tiny nuclear engines, when active, actually produce electric charge when they're not running or uh, pushing out thrust. So it's, it's not a whole lot, but I have so many that it counters most of my electrical needs. Also, you can see that I have some radiators on some parts. The mechanics for radiators have changed since before I started this mission. Uh, not this mission, but this, this playthrough one in Galileo. It used to be that the passive parts would only cool the ones that they were directly attached to. And now that's changed to nearby, which apparently means it'll also cool anything attached to the part that it's on. So by putting the radiators on this fuel tank, I also cool my convertitron, uh, which will be converting the resources. And then likewise, I have this radiator attached to this fuel tank so that it'll cool the drills that are connected to that. See, I'm out here in space so I can extend my antennas. And I can deploy my scanner just because. So let's see what this orbit looks like. And now I'm actually going to shut down some of my engines. So I've got one and two mapped to drills, three and four. So now I'm only using this outer ring of eight engines. So that'll take 78 seconds of burn. I don't need to use all of my engines. It'll just take longer, which I don't mind. So I'm not using the internal five or these external eight. I have a command chair here so that if I want, I can add an engineer and a docking port so that I can dock to fill the fuel. These small things here are actually fuel tanks that will inflate and blow up. So that's where uh, the majority of my fuel is going to be. So in addition to all these tanks, I can store about 75 tons of fuel uh, in these inflatable tanks. And then I could also store an additional about 15 tons worth of fuel from ore that I can also pick up in these tanks. I don't think that I'd necessarily want a vessel this large if I send it on an extended mission. But the reason I have so many drills on this is because I found that it can take like 40 to 60 days or more, depending on how many drills you have, to get enough fuel to fill up the tanks that you have. And that's more than the duration I would have for a return window. So my options are more drills or not leave when the window comes up, which means I would need some way of generating supplies. And right now I don't have the parts to make greenhouses and bases, so that's something I'm working on. Eventually I won't need to cater to transfer windows and I can mine resources, I can stick around for years if I want, if I can grow my own food. And then I can just skip around the system without having to come back to, to Gale.
So I should have enough liquid fuel to land, I hope. My assumption was with all the small tanks and these larger soft shell tanks, it should be enough liquid fuel to power my nuclear engines to get to and land on the planets I want to harvest from. I love how everything glows. It's the heat transfer. Um, so now I can perform an orbital survey. Twenty science, nice. And now it shows me where there are ore deposits. I think this is easier to look at in the ScanSat map than it is on the planet like that. So I'll toggle resources. I'll look for ore. Turn those on. So the drills that I have are fairly low quality. They're actually below the starter ones that you get at stock. And they need at least two and a half percent concentration in order to mine anything. So looking at this map, I see zero, highlands, zero, midlands, 2%. I believe that the way the ore is distributed in Galileo's planet pack, it's actually by biome. So midlands, 2%, lowlands, 1%, droops, 3%. So in order to harvest any resources, I'll have to land in the droops. Bring my apoapsis down. Now my periapsis. Probably something around 15,000 meters. And then I can circularize at my periapsis and then land on the southern pole as I go by. I guess the northern pole because of the way I'm going right now. So that looks like a pretty safe place to try landing. Looks fairly smooth down there. I'll actually just start burning now. And I'll go stability assist instead of retro so I don't start sliding up the nav ball. 25 meters a second. Turn off those other engines. Alright, so my horizontal speed is 6.8 meters a second. I only need to be uh, below 12, I think, for these landing legs. But I, I would prefer a soft landing. Touchdown in eight seconds. I don't remember seeing a touchdown option before. Nice soft landing. Eight 
in some kind of shadow, unfortunately. So hopefully my drills can reach the ground. Let me deploy my drills. Give you guys a look. And then look at my electric charge. Start mining. Now the way I have these fuel tanks distributed is if I was going to be going on an extended mission, I would be using nuclear engines for most of my space travel. So the top version of these inflatable tanks is a combination of liquid fuel and oxidizer, which I would probably use for my landers. But then the bottom half is set to be just liquid fuel. So there's going to be much more liquid fuel in this than uh, oxidizer. Now that I'm getting ore, you can see I've got 0 0.02 ore. That's not a whole lot. Um, one ore will turn into two liquid fuel. So you can see that this is something that'll take a long time. And then here I've got my Convertotron, ISRU in Sitsu resource, uh, basically means at site. So I can have it set to build or convert to liquid fuel and oxidizer, monopropellant liquid fuel oxidizer, or water to LH2OX. Huh. Hydrogen and oxygen? Lithium? Um, I don't know what those are for. Some other fuel, I guess. I'm just going to start converting liquid fuel to oxidizer. And you can see that it has a core temperature. It needs to heat up to 1000K to become efficiency. The thermal efficiency right now is really low. Same thing for these drills. So they're still heating up. So once they get up to that 500K, they'll be more efficient. So let's fast forward through this a little. And once it hits 500K, it should stop because the radiator should be radiating excess heat. So the efficiency is now 100%. So it's harvesting ore at 0 0.01 a second. That's actually not that bad. You can see that my oxidizer's only gone up 0.17, so that's pretty slow. This is still not it. its core efficiency. It's only 7.1% efficient. And efficiency, I thought, might mean you'd get more fuel out of each ore, but it's actually just um, a time thing. So if you're more efficient, you just convert faster. So if I had an engineer, I wouldn't get more fuel out of the ores that I harvested. I would just convert it faster. And with all these drills, the bottleneck really is my single convertitron. 5% load. Four, three, nine. Actually, it's not my bottleneck right now because my ore amount is decreasing. Interesting. In some tests that I was doing simulations on, uh, I think it was not going that way. But as you can see, I've got a rather large ore operation going on now here on IOTA. And these are slowly filling up. But as you can see, this would take a long time for me to fill up uh, my 3000 oxidizer and additional 1200 fuel. 
So I'm just going to leave this running and we'll go do something else. So in the stock version of KSP, the administration building gives you up to five strategies. I seem to be stuck at three. I don't know why. Uh, Strategia caps it at four. You can see if I look at fully upgraded, it should be four. I don't know if something else is limiting it even more. It could be the Galileo's Planet Pack version, but I hadn't looked at all of these before because the pilot focus, engineer focus, and scientist focus all have to do with contracts, which I'm not doing. But if you look at the final tier, plus 20% science to field work when a scientist is present. Parachute effectiveness increased by 10%, strut strength increased by 50%, reaction wheel torque increased by 50% when an engineer is on board. And engine ISP increased by 2.5% when a pilot is on board. So those all sound pretty awesome. Uh, the way these work, you can only have one. So 20% more science sounds really good, but 2.5% engine impulse um, also seems pretty awesome. So I might pursue one of those, but I seem to be limited to three. Right now I'm using massive scale launches to get money every time I launch a large craft. But the one I'm going to go for right now is Local Science 1. So plus 20% bonus to Kerbal Space Center Science. I need science so that I can unlock some new parts. And I haven't really gotten a lot of science in Gale. There's science right at the Space Center. So I'll unlock that. Two plus, and then this starts giving me Gale Science as well as Kerbal Space Center Science. But it's the third tier that is awesome. Negative 2% science cost for research. I should have gotten that a long time ago. 2% isn't a lot, but every little bit helps. So for now, I'm gonna stick with these three. What do I, I actually need to spend science to unlock these. Like I need 250 science to get to that level. So I'll come back and take a look at that later. Okay, so this is gonna be rather boring. I'm gonna drive around the Space Center with Bob and pick up all the science that I can from the individual buildings. Let me take note of what I start with, 126.1 science. So, unfortunately, you can't have a Kerbal start in a command seat. Those wheels are spinning, let me put the brakes on. So I needed to stick him in a pod, and then the pod is clearly weighing down this silly looking contraption. It's uh, one of the original flying machine designs, I guess. So I'm going to uh, separate that. And uh, looks like it's kind of stuck on there. I'm actually controlling Bob. So Bob is going to go climb aboard this. And let's see if we can Oh, I've got my brakes on. Drive forward. There we go. Now I don't want to don't want to tip this over. This uh, isn't the greatest design, I guess. Let me look at experiment tracker and see what it says I can do. I can take a surface sample from the launch pad. I haven't done that before. Huh, four and a half science. Atmosphere analysis. You run an atmospheric analysis recording various measurements like temperature, pressure, and atmospheric composition. Three science. Keep that. Magnetometer. It's making my vessel really tall. I I feel like I must have done those. 0.8 science, it's not a lot. Materials bay. You're on the side. 0.7 science. So that's something I've done before. You can see it's partially complete. I'll keep that. X-ray data. That's this one. 
It's going to send this little probe into ground. Is this the hangar? Oh. I slowed down too fast and I broke all my solar panels. Uh. Oh, that could be bad. Not enough electric charge shutting down. So some experiments actually do need electric charge, I guess. So I'll keep all of those. I will recover this. play all these okay third time's a charm if it wasn't apparent to you guys uh, building rovers is something I have pretty much no experience doing this one at least has a uh, much wider base should be less likely to tip over I also got rid of the extra stuff I didn't need uh, yeah, rovers, uh, planes. I don't have a lot of experience with planes either. I don't like planes because they're so slow. And the missions take forever, but you're able to... This looks pretty stable. Let's zip over. So it took three tries, but we got about 680 some odd science. Um, no new ribbons. Let's recover this. Okay. Let's see if the research is actually cheaper. 245. Uh, I think that's five, five cheaper. Yep, so that is working. So I've got a Thalia probe entering sphere of influence of Thalia in 37 days. That's probably where I'll begin with the next episode. This is 
Not generating any waste heat and very slowly building up ore an oxidizer. So, uh, that's it for this episode. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next one.